off. There we go. Good morning, church, and Merry Christmas to all. It's so good to see each and every one of you. It's so good to see all the kids in the services and really appreciate uh, God's wonderful blessings with the many kids that our church has. And it's, again, uh, it's so good to see both young and mature. Uh, we don't want to say old around here, right? They're more mature, but it's so good to see each and every one of you. Thank you for coming out and uh, spending this Christmas season with us. We ask for God's blessing upon you, and uh, we're excited to get into this morning's message. Uh, up to this point, we've covered three of God's gifts to us, Jesus' gifts being love, joy, and peace. And uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, the greatest gift of all, that being eternal life. But before we begin our services, let's open in a word of prayer. And let's stand. Let's stand as we open in a word of prayer and uh, as we get ready for this morning's worship. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for giving us the ability to gather together as believers here at Fulton Baptist. We thank you for uh, sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins so that we can freely, with that free gift, come to you. Lord, we just pray that uh, your blessing will be upon the service. We ask for your blessing upon the preaching. We ask for your blessing upon the reading of your word. And we ask for your blessing as we worship you and as we reflect praise back to you for all the good things that you've done for us. God, I pray that you just bless the service, bless both young and bless both old today and everyone in between. And Father, we pray for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's remain standing as we sing.
I'm, I'm kicking off announcements this morning. Um, Pastor Jeremy and the deacons asked if I would take a minute to publicly share something that I shared private with, with them recently. So um, my family and I will be joining a different church starting in the new year. And I appreciate the opportunity to take a minute to explain this because I want to clearly explain why we're doing that. Um, we're not we're not mad or we're not upset or anything like that. We're leaving on very good terms, and we thank the world of this church, have the utmost respect for the leadership, um, all the deacons, Pastor Jeremy. Um, so it's it's nothing like that, you know. Like we're not upset or anything. Um, and I'm going to try and keep this con, uh, concise. My wife says I always give way too many details when I explain things, but so some of you know a bit of our backstory. When we came here four years ago, we totally started a new life. Kind of we left. We we're working in Haiti as pastor and wife and doing missions work and things and um, kind of restarted our life and took a totally different direction just to focus on our marriage and things at home, our, our spiritually where we were at, just had a lot of stuff to sort through and kind of regroup. And so we did that. Um, but our, our passion, our desire for cross-cultural ministry never left us. And so we just prayed about it, sat on it, felt like we need to focus on our home and that kind of thing. But God's done a lot in us these last four years and really developed us and, um, you know, got a lot of our spiritual health back, our health of our marriage. And so we've been praying about, you know, what, what's next for us. And um, we don't feel like at this point, at least, we're supposed to move to a foreign country or anything like that. Um, who knows, maybe in the future. But for right now, we, we saw this desire. And, you know, sometimes, um, sometimes you're looking way out here for what you're supposed to do and it's right in front of your face. You know, it works that way a lot. And um, that's just often the case. And if you've paid any attention to the transformation of, of Logan Sport these last several years, you realize that many of the nations of the world are right on our front step in that little town. And I've just been mesmerized the times I've been in that town and see all the different people groups and the different languages spoken at Walmart and all these things. And so um, this fall, I made friends with a man named Zach, who is uh, the pastor of The Bridge, which is an intercultural uh, Spanish-English congregation in, in Logan Sport. And uh, his church actually owns and runs a, uh, a legal office for immigration stuff right in their church. And um, it's interesting to me, he said that they process people from 120 different countries in that legal office in Logansport, Indiana, a town of 18 to 20,000 people. And that just baffled me. But um, I know for some people, some of those changes have been a negative thing. And I understand that. Um, for me, I see that as a great opportunity with all these people coming into our community to reach out to them and especially for my type of passions that I have. And so, um, I got to know Zach and his wife a little bit and their story, really similar to ours. They were serving overseas as missionaries and through some similar uh, reasons came home and uh, God showed him that, hey, you can use your passion for cross-cultural ministry right here in your own backyard. And so that's what he's been doing. And as I've kind of got to know him, got to know, uh, ask questions about the church, I see that their vision and passion for um, that type of ministry really lines up with, with where Abby and I are at. And uh, so we, we feel... Um, just compelled and drawn to to plug in there and um and i just want to say you know very much that that is the reason that so that we can put ourselves in a place where we can begin building those relationships and and um, connecting with people from other cultures again and it's, it's nothing about you know well, we're upset or we're mad or anything like that and you know we're not sure what god's long-term plan for us is but we really feel a lot of peace that this is the next step for us and so we will be making that change. Uh, we'll still be here a couple more Sundays, but we'll be making that change in the new year. And we do plan on, you know, maintaining friendships. And, and um, I've told Jeremy and the deacons, I'll be faithfully praying for you guys. I know this is a big transition year for the church, and so I'll be faithfully praying for you all. And, and, and we still live in Fulton, so we're not, we're not far. We are house hunting, but 
we'll see how that goes. We've been house hunting for a year now, but we might still, you know, find a place here in Fulton. So we'll, we won't be strangers. You'll be seeing our faces, just probably not on Sunday morning. So um, again, the biggest thing I want to stress is we appreciate and value all of you very much and, um, you know, hope to stay connected, hope to maintain our friendships and definitely will be praying for you and be on our hearts. Good morning. Okay, let's get back to having fun. Gee, Kevin, thanks. Is this thing working? Okay, good. All right, uh, one thing that Kevin didn't mention is that he speaks another language, and it's a language that a lot of us cannot speak. What's the name of that language? Haitian Creole. And there's a group of Haitians in Logan Sport, and I can't minister to the Haitians in Logan Sport because I don't speak their language, but somebody here does. So that's an awesome part of their plan. He left out, but um, what an awesome opportunity for them to be able to minister to people, and they already speak the same language. So um, I'm very thankful and happy for you guys, and we all wish you the best, and we know that we'll see you guys, so we're not going to forget you. Okay, uh, a few announcements this morning. First of all, man... You guys sounded so good this morning. I stand up here in the front singing, and I mean, it was loud. You guys really sang out this morning. Could you hear them? It was awesome. So you guys did very good. And it's good to see some people that we haven't seen for a while. Um, I know that many of you um, have had to stay away from the church for one reason or another, and uh, mostly it's just the times that we live in. But it's great to see many of you back here today. And um, some of you haven't been here for quite some time, but we understand, and we thank you for coming back, and it's good to see you guys. So um, good smiling faces this morning when I get up here. Okay, uh, a couple announcements. Um, the Sunday school sign-up sheets are at the back, and they're blank because we have a new year coming up. So you can uh, start filling those in if you would. Um, the ministries of nursery and Sunday school and junior church are big ministries for our church. We're still blessed to have lots of kids, and um, what a blessing that is for our church. So if you feel led or can be a part of that ministry, please sign up. Okay, um, the Christmas cards are back here in the post office, and they're ready to go. So um, on your way out, poke your head in there and grab your cards out of the box so you can have them before Christmas. Okay, um, we will not be having FBT clubs or youth group while school is out on Christmas break. And just a reminder, we follow the school schedule. So if they cancel school like they did this last Wednesday, and by the time... Uh, FBT clubs, the roads were clear, but we just always follow the school. So if they cancel school on Wednesday, which it seems like it always falls on Wednesday for some reason, then we don't have FBT clubs or youth group. So just keep that in mind. I know that's a recurring theme. You hear that all the time, but that's what's going on. But we are looking to resume January 6th. Okay, um, New Year's Eve party, 8 p.m. at the FBT Center. Okay, so um, if you can make it or you don't have anything to do on New Year's Eve, um, come and turn your kids loose to a bounce house and relax while they bounce their little hearts out. Okay, um, anything else that we need to add this morning in terms of announcements? Okay, um, I'll repeat some of that just a little bit because the people at home can't hear when you talk down there, but I'm not giving Mark a microphone today. I'll tell you that much right now, okay? <laughs> That was close. Okay, anyways, how, uh, <laughs> I don't think Mark looks like Santa Claus at all. <laughs> but he's got an outfit, and he will in the outfit. Mark does a great ministry for the community, especially over at the 12-mile area. So if you have an uh, opportunity and want to give, um, there's needy people that are over that way, and Mark's going to organize a way to get stuff to them. So um, Mark's asking if you want to be a part of that. Um, get with him. Uh, he's got a whole thing going. And he also had a praise this morning remembering uh, one of his mentors from his past. I'll call him that because Carl helped um, Mark to realize what's important on Sunday morning. And so Mark was just remembering uh, uh, the impact that Carl Scott and his family had on Mark's life. So um, that's Mark in 20 seconds instead of 20 minutes. Oh, man. Oh, that was bad. Okay, anyways, um, moving on. Um, back to um, 
the prayer requests. Um, as you all know, there was a funeral here this, yesterday afternoon for the Girton family, and um, they still need a lot of prayer. You know, this is going to be a hard week for them. Um, they're trying to uh, move forward, so just please um, keep um, the family of Candace Girton, which would be the gardeners, in your prayers. Also, um, the Rensselaer family, um, the passing of Jim. I really like Jim. He was a good old boy. And um, uh, we know that Jim went home to be with the Lord this past week. So, um, you know, keep a keep a prayers out for uh, the Rensselaer family also. Um, there's a note in here about Greg Dalton. He's been getting ready for a heart procedure. And um, we had an update that Dorothy Baird is in um, Lutheran in Fort Wayne. I think she's still there. They're watching her um, regarding some medical issues that she's going through. So, you know, the Baird family sat back here in the church for all those years, and they just really missed the fellowship side of um, church. So if you have an opportunity to reach out, you know, and you could call them or send them a card, I'm sure they would just love to hear from you. So um, there's many on here um, that we haven't gone through. And um, there's COVID-related stuff out there, and I know that everybody it's, has it probably knows somebody who's experiencing some poor part of the COVID, whether they're quarantined or they can't see their family, or Christmas is just going to be different this year. So it's going to be a tough week for a lot of people. So I just ask that you would continue to pray for this nation as uh, we heal from uh, all the COVID-related stuff in the crazy world that we live in right now. But the main thing is, is that we can still be a, a, a joy and a light to others and bring the love of Christ to others in this season. So just keep that as your main focus as we go through this week that um, Christ is the meaning. So I see that on the signs when I drive by the churches and it really brightens my day. So is there anything else that we need to add this morning for the prayer list or um, announcements? Going once? Going, no, Mark. Mm -mm. Sorry, this side of the church, but I'm not looking that way. No. Okay. Um, nothing else? Hey, ushers, would you come forward so we can pray together? All right, let us pray together. Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity that we can come here in this town of Fulton in this small church and worship you, Lord. We thank you so much that you have provided the means and the way for everybody to get here this morning. Lord, we thank you for our group that watches from home through the internet and what a blessing we have to reach so many people that can just tune in and watch in the comfort of their homes where they need to be this morning. Lord, we just ask that you would bless this congregation in this building today, but also those who are watching at home. Lord, we ask a blessing that our the reach of your son Jesus through this season will go far and wide, Lord, in only the means that you have provided in ways that we don't even understand, Lord, that you would just do that. Lord, this morning, we lift up Kevin and Abby and their ministry opportunity in Logan Sport. Lord, we just ask that you would open doors for them. We ask that you would place them in front of the people who need to hear about your son, Jesus. We ask that you would encourage them and lift them up in this time of change. Lord, we ask that you would continue to just provide a way for them to minister and share the love that they have for your son, Jesus. Lord, we ask for those who are on our prayer list this morning. Lord, this morning, we specifically want to pray for the gardener and for the Rensselaer family for their losses this past week. Lord, um, we lift up Dorothy and Charlie Baird this morning. Um, we know that they are suffering. Lord, we just ask that you would also touch the lives of so many people who are struggling with this Christmas season because it may just be different this year, because it may not feel the same. Lord, because they're suffering, they've lost somebody, or they can't be with their families. Lord, you can patch this and make this for something great. And Lord, that's what we ask for this Christmas season. Lord, we pray, pray a blessing over Jeremy and his family. Lord, we, we thank you for providing his leadership in our church. Lord, we ask that you would put a blessing over his sermon this morning, Lord, that the words from your scripture would pierce our hearts and build us up for this week that we have ahead of us. Lord, finally, we ask about this money that we are able to give this morning, Lord. We just ask that you would multiply it through our ministries, Lord, that you would provide your will for this small portion of money that we are able to give back, Lord. And just 
that we can be a part of your ministry, Lord. We just ask that you would continue to bless this church. Pray a blessing over everybody here and all those watching at home in this offering this morning. And Lord, we thank you so much for the first gift of Christmas, for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. <laughs> Stand together again, please.
Sounds great. Um, you may be seated, but we're doing something a little different. We want the kids, if they could please come up here and sit up here. And Jeremy's got some things to share this morning with you. Getting, but kids, come on up, coming around. If you think you're a child at heart, even the babies are welcome. Come on up. We got our little girl coming. No, she's not coming. She must be gremlin. All right, have a seat, guys and girls. You have a little baby sister. All right. And you're going to sit by Jacob. All right. 
Jesus Christ said, suffer the little children. Let them come to him. And so what we're going to do, boys and girls, I'm going to be over here. Uh, but I want to read to you a story, and I have something for you. I need an elf. Who wants to be my elf? It's all right. Can you go ahead and give one of these to everybody? All right. Now everyone's like, oh, I wish I would have went up. Can you also help? You're going to share with Jacob, all right. But um, here's a story of a candy cane. And I want to read to you a little poem about the candy cane. So boys and girls, look at the candy cane. What do you see? Stripes that are red like the blood shed for me. White for my Savior, who is sinless and pure. J is for Jesus, my Lord, that is sure. Turn it around and the staff you will see, Jesus my shepherd was born for me. See, the candy cane is a picture of Jesus Christ. But he didn't come as an adult like me or old people like your moms and dads or young people like your grandparents, right? They're younger than your, your moms and dads. But. but I want to read to you the whole reason for this season. See, it's found in the book of Luke. And it's the story of Jesus Christ. Not when he came as an adult, but no, when he came as just a tiny little baby. How many of you have little baby brothers or sisters? Any, anybody? No, they're all eating their candy canes. <laughs> you have a little sister. All right. But it came as a little tiny baby. Here's the story. So this is out of the little book of Luke. And it says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one to his own city. And Jesus also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered." And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord showed round about them and they were afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Boys and girls, this is why we're gathering in church this morning was for that time to remember when Jesus Christ came to the earth as a tiny little baby. So if you're wondering why you're getting gifts this coming Thursday when you pillow your head Wednesday night, remember, it's, we get that example because of the best gift ever, and that was God Almighty sending Jesus Christ, his own son, as that little baby. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining me this morning. Enjoy your candy cane, and have a wonderful day in junior church. All right, we have four candy canes left over. We're going to start the bidding at $25. $25. Yeah, we're building a building now. We've got to put some uh, basketball goals. and uh, Boy, wouldn't it be nice to have hardwood floors there? And Now we're talking. That way our boys from Casta can maybe practice there. Ooh, I'm sorry. No, I'm just kidding. We went to the game last night. It was a good game. I appreciate uh, their hard work and their effort. And uh, it was, overall, it was a, it was a good game. So uh, good job, guys, that are, that are here playing last night. But um, anyway, let's, let's make a, a turn back into uh, this morning's message. Up to this point, we've looked at um, a couple different gifts. If, if you're just now joining with us, we've been going through uh, three particular gifts, the best gifts 
of, of God that he, he gave to us. And we looked at Jesus is the giver of peace. We turn to that passage in, in Isaiah where it talked about Jesus being the prince of peace and how many thought that Christ the Messiah was going to come because he was going to relieve them of the authority and the thumbprint of, of the nation, of, of, of the Romans. And so when, when we just read that story there in Luke, and when Herod heard of that, he thought, this guy, he's coming, this, this Messiah is being born because he's going to take over my reigns. And so Herod obviously wanted to kill him and get rid of that little baby. But that's not why Christ came. No, Christ came to give peace. He's the Prince of Peace. Christ also came to give joy. He's the giver of joy. Where the Apostle Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. How can we say with confidence that Paul, being shackled with his hands and with his feet in a dark dungeon, how can he truly say, I have joy and you also had a, ought to have joy? Why did he have joy? Because he had Christ in his heart. Jesus being the giver of joy and had that joy within him. And Paul said, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord always. I'm going to uh, serve him because he is my savior. He came as that little humble baby and grew up and suffered and died for our sins. He is the giver of joy. Jesus is not only a giver of peace and not only a giver of joy, but then this morning in our 915 service, we looked at how he is the giver of love. And because of God's sacrificial love to us that we observe in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Because of that example of that action of love and also that, that deep thought and, and how that God gave his only begotten, his one of a kind son, had a lot of thought behind his action. Because of that example of love, we ought to be challenged to love one another. Where scripture tells us that uh, we, that others will know that we're disciples of Jesus Christ because we share that same love of him. As you are loving others, as you are expressing your gratitude, and as you are reaching out and, and um, with your, your brotherly kindness and your brotherly love, others will know that you belong to Jesus Christ. It's like wearing a badge that says, I'm a citizen of heaven. It's like an ambassador when he goes to a foreign nation and he has a tag and says, I'm from the United States. Others know because of that label. But as their actions go forward, maybe they talk a little differently. They know, oh, you're an American. Same it is with us. People will know that we're disciples of Jesus Christ as we're sharing God's love with others. Again, the best gifts. But the last and the final gift that we are able to unwrap is the gift of eternal life. And this gift, and through this gift alone, by accepting Jesus Christ as our own personal Savior, we can share the gift of love. We can have the gift of peace. And we can have the gift of joy. This is the greatest gift of all. It's the largest gift of all. Because without this gift of eternal life, we wouldn't have joy. Without the gift of eternal life, we wouldn't have peace. Without the gift of eternal life, we wouldn't know how to love. We would just have the examples of sin-filled people. Oh, they look like they're a good example of love, but deep down, if they're without Christ, they don't have the true example of what love really is. So this morning, we're going to look at the gift of eternal life. We're going to look that Jesus Christ, number one, he is the source of eternal life. And there in your Bibles, or there in your, your handout, we have a passage in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 10, we're going to go through this passage and then even look into verse 20. It's not going to be a lengthy message. You say, phew, we're going to be out by 11.30 after all. Well, as Rusty said yesterday, we're at the ball game. He said, you should tell the church, tomorrow is the shortest day of the year, but that doesn't mean we're going to have the shortest message of the year. But we'll try. <laughs> we'll try to get out. See, I threw you under the bus because I, I didn't come up with that on my own. So if you laughed, ah, that is good. If you didn't laugh, it's his fault. So. But uh, just have four quick points about Jesus being the giver of eternal life. It says in 1 John chapter 5, in verse 10, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. 
If you believe, you have Jesus Christ within you. That is very clear in verse 10. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar because he believed not the record that God gave of his son. And that record was found in the Old Testament of the prophecies of the Messiah to come and it was also written for us in Luke chapter 2 which we read to the children this morning. And this is the record, here it is, that God hath given to us eternal life and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. So here's the illustration for us. You either have the gift of eternal life or you do not. There's no middle ground right there. And the records even show the Old Testament and the, the coming of the fulfilled prophecies in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John show that the record is simply this. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on his name of the Son of God that ye might know that you have eternal life, and that ye may believe in the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. Jesus is the giver of eternal life. Number one, Jesus Christ is the source of eternal life. And it says it clearly right here. And the testimony is this, that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. The gift of eternal life is only by the the bloodshed of Jesus Christ. If you want to unwrap the greatest gift of all, if you want to unwrap this gift of eternal life, you have to go through Jesus Christ, God's only son. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. Or Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're trying to get to heaven. We're trying to have that fellowship with God, but we cannot do it outside of the source of Jesus Christ. It's the testimony. That's the record. God has given us eternal life through Jesus Christ. The greatest gift of all, eternal life, can be had by yourself but you must receive him you must say oh lord i know that i'm a sinner i know that because of my sin because of that sin that i inherited from that rotten adam and his kids and his kids and his kids all the way to my father and he he passed it on to me i know that i'm a sinner i know that i could try to do the best things in the world but lord without you i know that i will continuously fail Lord, I need that gift of eternal life this morning and I know that it only comes by your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, I need joy in my life. I need love and I need peace in my life. But first, Lord, I need to get this situation of eternal life under control because I don't know if I'm going to go to heaven when I die. See, there's only one of two places that you're going to be spending eternity. And that's either going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ and God Almighty or you're going to be separated from him in a place that we know of as hell. See, the worst part about living in hell isn't that it's an eternal torment. No, it's an eternity separated from the love of God. And so there was that that rich man that, oh, he just wanted that little bit of water to be dripped on his tongue. How much satisfaction can you get from one tiny little drip? But that rich man says, will you please send... Abram to, uh, will you please send Lazarus to just simply dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue? Again, that's, that's a, enough alone to say, boy, I don't want that. But what it should be is, oh, I'm going to be separated from God. The rich man was here separated from Lazarus, separated from Abraham and the saints and separated from God Almighty. It's an eternity separated from him. So again, as uh, 1 John tells us, He that hath the Son hath life and live with with him in eternity. Or if you do not have the Son of God, you do not have life. You cannot unwrap the rest of the gifts. You must first accept the gift of eternal life. If you want true joy in your life, you must have eternal life. If you want peace that passes all understanding, you have to have the gift of eternal life. If you want to show love as Christ showed love, you have to have already unwrapped that gift of eternal life. See, we can be good people without Jesus Christ. 
there are good people out there. And uh, I'm no stranger to um, people that are non-believers giving us great and mighty things. And we're so appreciative of that. But see, that with, even if they do give gifts, even though they, they work and they try to say, well, I'm, I'm 75% sure that I'm going to go to heaven because I did this for the widows, because I did this for the church, or because I did that. No, the only way that you're going to have life is through Jesus Christ, God's Son. It says it clear as day here in 1 John chapter 5. Jesus Christ, He is the source of eternal life. Verse 12 tells us that Jesus Christ is the solution for eternal life. Christ is the solution for eternal life. He who has the Son hath life, and he who does not have the Son of God does not have life. In order for the solution to be solved, whether you're going to be spending it with, with Jesus Christ or if you're going to be spending it in a place separated from God, you have to solve the solution of your relationship with Jesus Christ. You have to go to him. And, uh, and, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Or in the, the book of Ephesians where, where it talks about the, the old things that we used to do. And then the, the uh, fourth verse it says, But God, who was rich in mercy for his great love, where he loved us, even when we were dead in sins and in trespasses, even when we, we did evil things against God, he still died for us. He quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. And he raised us up together with him and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness with and through Jesus Christ. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It's the very gift that God wants to give you this morning. You say, Pastor Jeremy, I've received this gift. I did it when I was such and such age. And I, 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 this is a message that I've heard over and over again. But let us just for a moment pause and reflect on what eternal life truly means for you and I. If you're a believer here this morning, eternal life already began for you. And the solution was already solved for you. You are going to be spending eternity with God Almighty. And that is exciting. And because you have already done that, you can have joy. You can have love. And you can have peace. And so when worries and trials and tribulations come your way, the solution is already there for you. It's because you have eternal life um, you can have true joy and peace and love. When situations just overwhelm you, you have Jesus Christ with you to help you solve all those different trials that come your way because of the one who uh, gave us that uh, tremendous gift of eternal life. We have the solution for what it means to have joy in our hearts and joy in our life. So number one, Jesus is the source of eternal life. Number two, Jesus is the solution for eternal life. And number three, Jesus Christ is the supplier of eternal life. Verse 13 of 1 John 5 says this, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you might know that you have eternal life. So again, Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection, that's the very source of but here, Jesus is the supplier. He's the one who continually gives it out. When you believe on the name of the Son of God, you can know 100% sure that you have eternal life. When witnessing to individuals, um, whether it's coworkers or neighbors or even just a complete stranger, one thing that you might say is, uh, how confident are you going to, how confident are you that you're going to go to heaven when you pass from this earth? Are you, and you give them percentages. You say 50% sure, 75% sure, or 100% sure. And sometimes people say, well, I'm, I'm like 25% sure. I'm in that half. Or if they're decent or they're average people, they'll say, well, I'm 50-50. And then if they say, well, I've been going to church since I was knee high to a grasshopper, as the old saying goes, I'm 75% sure. And then the way you transition into that is say, well, how would you like to know if you can be 100% sure that you're on your way to heaven? 
And then you can take them to this passage here about the gift of eternal life, or you can walk them through the Romans road where, um, where it says that God commends his love toward us and that while we are yet sinners, and you say, well, do you know that you're a sinner? And they say, well, yeah, I've done this thing. I, or if they say, no, I'm a pretty good person. You say, well, have you lied? And well, I did a little bit. And well, there we go. That's breaking the commandments. And uh, that's a sin. That's missing the mark that God has for you. And, and you take them to this passage where God supplies. God, Jesus Christ is the one who supplies that eternal life. And you say to them, if you believe in the name of the Son of God, you can know. You can know with 100% certainty that you're going to be spending all of eternity with God Almighty and with Jesus Christ, His Son. Jesus Christ, He is the supplier of eternal life. And then we observe in verse 20, it says this in 1 John chapter 5, we observe that Jesus is the source and the solution and the supplier of eternal life, but here he is the sustainer of eternal life. He is the one who keeps you. He is the one that holds you. He is the one that wraps you around his arms and wraps you around his hands and says, no matter what, I am not going to let anyone pluck you out of my Father's hand. It says in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 20, and we know, again, this is 100% certainty that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Jesus and God the Father is the sustainer of eternal life. And I have on the back of the uh, bulletin, and I have this for your reference, I don't have anything uh, for you to fill in here, and I knew that I would get through these first four things, but I have this on the back for you because sometimes you may struggle with this assurance of eternal life. Sometimes when you speak of eternal life, and boy, you do something rotten, and you say, well, wow, did God really forgive me? I don't know if I'm on my way to heaven because I still continue to do this. Well, I have for you just a, a couple of brief statements about assurance of salvation. And you see, assurance is based on the certain knowledge of God. And I have some references there for you. So knowing that assurance comes from knowing God through his creation. Assurance comes from knowing God through his mighty acts. And there's some passages for you. But assurance can also be based on the certainty of God's word. Yea, hath God said, and yes, God did say this. That uh, the certainty, the, the true saying that we observed in 1 John chapter 5, knowing that one and true God, that God is not a liar. God will always do what is right, yes. God will always be perfect, and God is always just. Jesus Christ was sinless here on this earth. And we know that through, uh, through certainty that we can have assurance based on the certainty of God's word that it is 100% true. And then thirdly, assurance is based upon God's vindication or God's uh, claiming to you not guilty. I saw this uh, about a definition of vindication. Vindication, is, vindication involves a total clearing of a person's name. You've probably heard the term exoneration, and especially through the political system the last several months, you've heard that term before. But vindication is a total clearing of a person's name often with the additional sense that he or she was right all along. And wow, that's, the, that's a great definition of even uh, uh, justification. You probably heard the, the statement, just as if I've never sinned. And that's when, G, when, when God Almighty looks at you, and if you've accepted the free gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, God looks at you and says, like that term says here, vindication. Vindication through his Son. Uh, a total clearing of a person's name. That's what it means to have eternal life. And so if you've received that gift of eternal life, it's a gift that you can never put down. You've already unwrapped that gift of eternal life. God Almighty lives within you through the Holy Spirit. And when you pass from this earth, you're going to be spending eternity with Him. But you first must have made that commitment. You first have, must have made that decision that, okay, I'm going to receive that free gift of salvation. And you say, but I can't get this sin under control. Well, join the crowd. We all have that old nature. 
And we all, that old nature pops its ugly head up every once in a while, but God gives us the strength to overcome. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes. He refines us. He tries us. We, we often fall, but God is right there to pick us up, back up. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful in that he will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape. So when temptation comes your way, because you have eternal life, because you have Jesus Christ living within you, you can say to that sin, that ugly thing that's in front of you, listen, Jesus Christ was able to overcome this temptation. So can I. And it takes work. Yes, I know. And it's difficult. And sometimes you may say, well, I fell. I thought I was stronger than that, but I failed. I must not be saved. I must not have unwrapped that gift of eternal life. That's not true. If you've unwrapped that gift of eternal life, it's not going anywhere. It's there for you to uh, continue to go back to. And I think that's why it's a tremendous, um, and that's why it's so important for us to look back at the time of Christ's birth looking back at these gifts that he's given to us. Because that's the reason why he came. He came to die. He came as a humble little babe to, uh, 33 years later, to suffer that gruesome death on the cross as a, a picture of that ugly sin and what it does to God Almighty. It hurts. God Almighty created us. He created us to fellowship with him. But oftentimes, what do we do? We break that fellowship. We separate from him, and God does not want that. Sin causes us to be separated from him. And uh, with his son, that reconciliation, that vindication was able to happen. And now we can live with him. And God wants to walk with us. God wants to talk with us. God wants us to have joy. God wants us to have peace. God wants us to show love. But first, you must have accepted that free gift of eternal life. Have you done that this morning? If you have, these other gifts are here for you. You can unwrap them and you can have joy in the midst of evil life's evil circumstances. You can have peace when overwhelming sicknesses happen in your family or when loss happens in your family. That peace can come to you because you have eternal life. And then lastly, love can come to you because you have eternal life. And with that love, you can say to others that I love you because God first loved me. And then they will know that you're disciples of Jesus Christ because you're showing your love toward them. So church, this morning, let us be challenged with this fact that God came to give us eternal life. That God came through that eternal life can come love, joy, and peace. The many reasons for this season. Uh, Christmas is, is a great time of the year for us to be reminded of these precious gifts. You know, as we're giving gifts to our kids, as we're giving gifts to our brothers and sisters and moms and dads, grandparents, whoever if you will, remember the best gift of all, and that was Jesus Christ. He's the example for us. Uh, he's the example for us to love one another. He's an example for us to have that peace and to have that joy. So church, this morning... As we close in the word of prayer, remember the best gift of all. Even if you say, you know, I've heard messages on eternal life, and that's old news. Let it not be old news for you. Go back into your Bibles and see that precious gift of eternal life that God the Father gave to you and remind you to say, okay, through that gift, I can have peace. Through that gift, I can truly have joy, and I can show love. Church, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for the message that you have for us. Father, we pray now that you'll uh, dismiss us with your blessings. Lord, I pray that you'll uh, challenge our hearts with this fact that you are the source of eternal life. You're the solution to all life's problems and you give that through eternal life. Lord, you've supplied this for us and Lord, you will even sustain this. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this church and thank you for their love for me and my family and for this community. Father, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, just wanted to say thank you uh, for the gift that you gave to our family during this Christmas season from the bottom of our hearts. We're truly blessed to be uh, part of this church. And again, thank you for your love and thank you for your gifts uh, to us during this Christmas season and for all the many cards that you showed to me and my family and for loving our family like your own. Again, church, I pray that you have a wonderful week. I pray that you have a great Christmas. And if you need anything, please feel free to reach out and we'll do our best to get and meet, meet your needs, whatever they may be. Church, God loves you, I love you, and you have a blessed day and a wonderful Christmas.